lots of controversy around the word baptism. Let's try to uh, see what this is all about. At the uh, website page, front page, go there, click on the front page, letter B for baptism. And there's a particular study I like to go to, baptisms, baptism as the Bible defines it. We can almost read this table of contents. There's so much to this. Uh, requires some careful thought, repetition, study. Send me a text or an email if you have any questions, objections. Summary points. Baptism means to be immersed, identified with something. And there are at least seven baptisms mentioned in the Bible. Some key arguments, which are so important that I thought I'd put them first. Argument one. If there is only one baptism which saves unto eternal life, and there are passages which speak of that, you can go there and check, click on this and, and find out where they are. And if Holy Spirit baptism actually identifies the believer with Christ, you can look up those passages as well by clicking on the statement. Then baptism which saves is Holy Spirit baptism and not water baptism. Another argument, argument number two, which is key. If baptism is an identification, then water baptism is an identification of some kind. Okay, let me get out of the way of my own argument here. Since one observes that one does not actually become identified with the water when one is water baptized, then water baptism is not a real baptism, but it is symbolic. Argument three. Since Holy Spirit baptism is not something the individual actually does, rather it is something which God, the Holy Spirit, does. It's actually in the passive mood. And since Holy Spirit baptism is the only baptism which is part of the actual real salvation unto eternal life process, then passages which command the individual to be baptized, active voice, not passive voice, then passages which command the individual to be baptized must be referring to the water baptism as symbolic of the individual having already been saved unto eternal life as water baptism is an activity which is to be performed by the individual and not by the Holy Spirit. Argument number four. Since dozens of passages stipulate that eternal life is received upon a moment of faith alone in Christ alone, with no mention of any other requirement, and since being saved unto eternal life is stipulated is not of works, not of any righteous deeds, and not of ourselves, then water baptism is excluded from what one must do to have eternal life. So click on these points and you'll get some passages to consider. Now, baptism defined. We can use dictionaries. Baptisma, baptism consisting of the process of immersing, submersion, and emergence. And a key word that's similar to that is bapto, meaning to dip, to immerse into. So we get the word and how it's used in Greek and English. And it shouldn't differ. There should be something offered in each passage to clarify what the context is using a proper available meaning of that word. A number of passages you can look at. There's seven major baptisms in the Bible. We have the baptism of Moses. A number of passages you can look at. 
And then we have the baptism of the cross of Christ bearing the sins of the whole world. Go back to Isaiah for that, as well as the Greek New Testament Bible. Notice the words upon him and has laid on him, indicating an immersing of our Lord into an, an identification of our Lord with the baptism in the sins of the whole world, the iniquity of us all. And we have 1 Peter 2.24 and 2 Cor 5.21 and so on. Check them out. That's baptism number two. Not necessarily in order of importance. Baptism of the Holy Spirit which is the baptism that saves you. Holy Spirit baptism historically began at Pentecost. You can check that out. Key point here. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is an event in the life of every believer beginning at the point of personal trust alone and Jesus Christ alone as Savior. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14, define that so well. Holy Spirit baptism is always in the passive voice relative to the contribution of man. Man receives, he doesn't do. And we can go to Romans chapter 6, because that's speaking of Holy Spirit baptism. You can check that out at your leisure. Having died to sin, i.e. the sin nature does not signify that the sin nature no longer exists, nor that it no longer can have influence over the believer. That's an important point. As you go through Romans chapter 6, all these points need to be investigated. You can move on to the next, the baptism of fire. The baptism of fire is a baptism of judgment of unbelievers into the lake of fire. And then we have the baptism of John the Baptist. John's baptism was a symbol of a Jew's repentance. In other words, of his changing of the mind to believing in the coming Messiah Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and of believing that he was about to bring in his kingdom rule upon acceptance of him by all of Israel. So, John's water baptism symbolized the Holy Spirit's regeneration of an individual. And the purpose of John the Baptist's ministry was to testify to Israel as to whom the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, was, so that through his testimony about Jesus, all Israel might have the opportunity to believe in Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Then would begin the kingdom rule on earth. This has not happened yet, and it will, though. A yet future generation of Israel. Israel has not been replaced by the church. We're waiting for that final generation when the new covenant will be fulfilled with the house of Judah and the house of Israel. You can look that up on the website and find that doesn't apply to the church. It applies to the house of Judah and the house of Israel, where there be a transformation of all Jews at that time. And there will be the priests that co-rule with Christ in the millennial kingdom over the earth. We will co-rule with Christ over the universe as part of his body, two different dispensations working together in the millennial rule and eternity. As prophesied, Israel by and large would reject her Messiah and John's baptism, so the kingdom rule was postponed. And uh, Peter mentions this in Acts chapter 3 as well as el elsewhere. John's baptism differs from the Holy Spirit baptism, and you can look at that. Similar but not the same. John's baptism was a baptism symbolizing repentance, changing one's mind to trusting in the coming Messiah for forgiveness of sins and admission into his kingdom. It was directed toward Israel. At first, Jesus Christ continued the ministry of John the Baptist. Recall that. The kingdom of God is at hand. 
repent. And if all repented, meaning changed their mind and believed in him, all of Israel would then be transformed and the kingdom would begin at that moment. Now we have the water baptism of Jesus. The water baptism of Jesus symbolized his identification with his mission of providing salvation for the world and establishing his messianic kingdom upon the earth. That was his mission. It identified him with his mission. On the other hand, the believer's water baptism symbolizes an actual Holy Spirit baptism, the latter of which is an actual identification with an appropriation of forgiveness of sins as a result of Christ's death to pay the penalty for our sins. So the water baptism of the believer is symbolic of the Holy Spirit baptism of that believer when he believes. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. So, believers have been buried with Christ through Holy Spirit baptism, which is symbolized by water baptism. So we do not and cannot follow our Lord in water baptism. That's not our mission. That's his and his alone. And now we have the seventh baptism, the baptism of church-age believers. Christian water baptism defined. Okay. We have some passages that we can look at. Christian water baptism represents retroactive positional truth, having been identified with the death of Christ on the cross. And it represents current positional truth, having Christ's perfect righteousness credit to one's account along with the immediate reception of eternal life. It's symbolic of that. Water baptism is not a requirement of salvation. See, it's I said the word represents. Remember, that's symbolic. Early church practice delayed new converts from being water baptized until they studied the Bible, corroborating the symbolic nature of water baptism for the believer in this age. So salvation unto eternal life is not by faith plus any works such as water baptism. And we have many passages that support that. And there are a number of passages in scripture which are often misinterpreted as teaching that water baptism is required for salvation unto eternal life. For example, John 3, 5 to 6, born of water, refers not to water baptism, but to Holy Spirit regeneration in the spiritual realm. And 1 Peter 3, 18 to 21 is water symbolizing the Holy Spirit baptism that saves you. And you can keep on reading there. Infant baptism is not biblical. My last statement. So, there's a lot there to be studied especially when you're sharing your faith with others. There's so much misconception. 